On today's episode of HairTube, it's the brunette's turn because lately it's only been the blondes that are having fun. Let's get inside and get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. I'm here today with Evelyn. So um, we're doing Evelyn's hair today. And look, it's been the blondes that have been having fun lately. So um, I thought we'd get Evelyn in. And I was actually expecting her to say I want to go lighter. And um, she's been, like loving being a brunette. And I think it's, um, it's nice, refreshing uh, for me, especially to um, be able to work with some brunette tone. So we had a bit of a chat about what we're going to do. I think we might keep some variation there. The reason being is I just don't want it to be like like really flat. I want it to have sort of a little bit of like variation in it so it's got a little bit of depth. But how that's going to actually look, we're not sure. There's um, a lot of blonde that was on there previously. The back is uh, pretty much was like natural uncolored hair that has been covered with a semi. And um, we're cutting the hair shorter. So it's going to be a big change today. Show us where we're about to think about doing it. This is like sort of about the collarbone sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, I think that's going to look really good. So the process is going to be a little bit um, unconventional today. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut Evelyn's hair first. Um, well, I'm going to do the majority of the haircut. Obviously, you guys who watch the channel know that the majority of the haircut I do when it's dry. So we'll get the length off we don't need now while it's wet. And then I'm actually going to create the base and the depth that I want. So we're going to choose the right color. We're going to use Matrix Color Sync. Um, and we're going to create a beautiful even palette then we're going to dry it off and that's when I'll go back and I'll do the lightening because um, I find that sometimes when we do foils or balayage and we try and like color around it it makes it a little bit hard so I'm just going to make it all beautiful brunette and um, I think we're going to use some of the acidic brunettes um, and then um, we'll go back and we'll put the lighting we just want to have some sort of variation in through the front maybe some underneath but pretty much everything's going to be a classic brunette with a little bit of something in there is that a butterfly is that your nickname or something? No, I don't like it. Don't it's... you? Yeah. Um, you should see how many tattoos I've got. Mm -hmm. You just can't see them. Mm. I've got none. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going <gonna get, laughs> to get Evelyn over the basin. I'm going to get her hair prepped. We're actually going to use one of the Biolage treatments as well. Um, just whenever you're doing um, hair, if you have the opportunity, make sure you put a treatment on someone because you know it's all about condition, make sure it's healthy and strong. So we'll do that, bring it back, cut her hair, dry it off. Actually, probably won't dry it off completely because we're doing a semi permanent. Do that, come back, and once we get to the lightening part, um, we'll explain a little bit more. And then when we get to the good part of the haircut when it's dry and we're doing some more technical work, I'll work you guys through that too. See you soon.
Okay, the back's done. Off camera, I just cross-checked it. Um, obviously, the reason being, uh, Evelyn's facing away from mirror, and we all know how difficult it can be sometimes to cut hair when you can't look up and just make so sure someone's centered. Um, it was a little bit off, but it's only a tiny, tiny bit, but uh, you guys know what I'm like. It has to be absolutely perfect. So now what we'll do, I'll just get you to look this way, Evelyn, if you could, and I'll just spin you here a little bit. You don't have to move. So the reason why I do this now is so I don't have to try and cut the hair on the shoulder. We'll just take a little bit of our guide from the back. And again, I try and, I try and cut this at natural fall all at once. So you don't have to cut the hair that's coming in from the back. Make sure it's not um, caught behind the ear. I'd like to use the wide um, side of the comb and don't squash it down over the ear like that. Make sure you lift it out and let it fall naturally. Um, when it's dry, we will um, cross check these and take off any little bits that we need. But you can see that we will just, while we're here, we'll get rid of that. And then, like I said, we'll triple check. And just the other way, gorgeous. This side's always good. We don't often need to take much off here. Being right-handed, it's easy to cut the left-hand side. Just that little bit there. Okay, now we're gonna shape the front. Okay, so take a section from around about 10 centimeters back from the front of a hairline to just behind the ear, like this. And all you wanna make sure we do is take our time while we're creating this guide because if we get this right, then all we need to do is cut the rest of the hair into that point. So it's really important that you take your time when you do this. I'm gonna start by doing a triangle section, albeit really, really lean. Straight through here, you can see that. And then, this is just gonna be my guideline to be able to make sure we get the right um, balance on both sides. Actually, going to do it just a little bit wider. Just spin Evelyn so you can see my projection. Now you know my sectioning. So you can see we're just working like ro a rectangle. And we're cutting that right over the top of the parting. It's not shifted distribution. And you can see there now we have our, our length that we want. So then what I do is I bring all that hair, I go from vertical section to horizontal, and I bring all that hair up to the, that point. Just head up a little bit more, babe, thank you. And then I over direct it to where I can see that shape, and then I let that go. So on this side, be able to see there. That falls out's important. Here's the, the guideline. And then we're cutting that up. So we're essentially cutting a V shape there, but this time we're doing it horizontally. And then we just cross check, make sure we're good. And then once we've got that shape perfect, uh, sorry, our guideline perfect, we can just continue to bring the hair from behind this section all the way to the front until we run out, and then that'll be the front done and we can get on to start coloring. You can see I'm just literally cutting like this, like an angle like that. So we're cutting concave, and then I'll jump around the other side.
So to make sure we don't cut these off. Now we've done that, we bring all that hair forward until we run out. There probably actually won't be a lot to cut into that section. So one thing that I say is don't go chasing it. If it doesn't reach, it doesn't reach. So you pop your head up again, babe. Find my center section, my axis of symmetry. I'm projecting it around about 90 degrees, maybe just below actually. So I'm technically doing graduation around the face, which is important to remember. Graduation builds shape, layering, um, sorry, graduation builds weight and builds shape and layering removes it. It doesn't remove shape, but layering will definitely um, remove the weight. Um, Evelyn's hair was a little bit light around the front um, when I started. So that's why I've chosen to project it below 90 degrees so that we can just build that shape up there. You can start to see that shape starting to form in there. Length's done, shape in the front's done. Um, now we're gonna dry it off and we're gonna start our color. So I will leave the layering and the, and the refinement of the shape until after the color's done. So I'm just gonna blast it dry and we're gonna get straight into the color. Quarters cut and now dry and you can see the length that we've gone for yes um, we're going to take texture or we're going to take some weight out of, of the hair later on we're going to texture it however the shape is pretty much as it will be so the good cheekbones we're going to show them off mm, yeah it's right on the collarbones just that I think it's important to keep a little extra length and be mindful that clients don't always just wear their hair straight sometimes they're going to wear it like with a wave so when it's wavy it's obviously going to jump up like an inch half an inch um, they're sort of the things that I, I like to keep in mind otherwise it can easily become a little bit too short i'm going to jump out the back we're going to get our first color and i'll be right back how beautiful is evelyn i mean that shape in there and the length is just perfect for her, i think so what we're going to do is there's a lot of warmth in the hair already so I'm going to actually intentionally cool her base right down. I just think it's a little bit warm. So I'm going to use a combination of violet and natural to just get me that level five, four, five color that I want. Um, I'm using color sync. I'd rather aim a little bit darker so we get a little bit of longevity out of it. So once the color is actually, um, done processed then i'm going to dry it off again we're going to go back and do the lightening and the reason i'm doing that is as i said before i find it hard to control processing while lightening hair put a color around it rinse it off without cross contaminating it with um, the color that you're removing then go back and tone it so people might say well you're backtracking well i might be but i'm prepping my base rinse i put the color in uh, the lightening i lighten where i want it to be lightened and I can actually see a beautiful clean um, canvas. Then once that's done, I rinse at the base and tone, back, dry, gone. Whereas if I did it the other way, it would be foils go in, base color goes on, base color gets rinsed, foils come out, then tone, then rinse. I just find that process where you're rinsing and potentially you can get like the base color getting onto the, um, the lightened part. Um, and not only that, you can push them around, they can slip, they can bleed, all sorts of things. So. That's why I do it. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's just how I do it. So we decided to use half 8P and half uh, 3N. I'm going to actually apply this. Now, I know there will be some people who disagree with me out there, but I'm actually gonna apply this roots to end, which is probably not what you'd normally do um, because 
you'd want to get the colour on to where the hair's lightest first. But um, what I'll do is I'll apply it to the roots first and then I'll put it on the front where the hair's lightest second and then um, I'll take it through the back. Um, the reason being is I want the, I want the, um, the lightness on the hair to be covered but I also don't want to um, put on the ends first and have that cover the most because I actually want to pull that out. So we're going to, don't you know, forget we're going to lighten it after too. So. Formula, uh, we used um, 40 grams of 8P, um, 30 grams of uh, 3N, and um, 10 volt, color sync, matrix. Process now for, it's a visual, visual thing, but maximum process in 20 minutes. I think 15 will be enough. Um, once it's all processed, we'll take Evelyn over the base and we'll rinse it out, bring it back. Um, I'm gonna do a combination of um, probably, uh, I, think, I think I'm just gonna go with doing some like baby lights just around the hairline. And I might do some heavier sort of um, back combed or maybe even weaved uh, panels just in the back, just so we get a little bit of color coming through here. We just want to do it in here as well. So that'll be really fun. Let's start through here. Just a little bit of color, about a quarter of an inch above the hairline, just so we can see those flashes as they're, um, as the hair's like worn curly, we want to have just some, we don't want it to be streaky. It's literally, we're just gonna do some really, really fine weaves like baby lights, just so we can have a little bit of color underneath that hairline. Sorry, on top of the hairline. These ones could be a little bit awkward to start with, just because of the angle. Perfect. I was just saying to Evelyn, her hair is so silky and I just absolutely love the tone. It's always good to sometimes have some go-to formulas in the salon for your clients. The color on this is just beautiful. You can see that it's that nice dark like level four but then you've got that pearly reflect through, and I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but I can definitely see it here. Type of weaving normally if I'm um, wanting to put um, a more significant amount of color in underneath I actually do it freehand but I find with this comb um, it actually um, gives me the right amount of hair into the into the section so that it's not too thick and it's not completely um, lost
to the middle part of our back section. And here I'm going to do a combination of weaves and back combing. done. Um, foils are in. I'm going to process those now just uh, keeping an eye on them, um, especially the ones that I did first here in the back. I may have to rinse them out first um, and then the next time you see uh, Evelyn she'll be back here uh, with her hair dry, colour done and we're going to go on to the dry part of the haircut. see that we've just got those nice light pieces that we scattered through there so not to go and make Evelyn blonde again but um, just so like I said here just coming past the eyes we have that sort of really nice pop with the, the colour. Now it's time to put that texture in that we spoke about and then we'll do some styling. So I'm going to start here in the back just going to use a clip and we'll take a a section, chin down for me gorgeous. We don't want to make holes. We can also make holes if we go diagonal rather than going straight in. My toner that we did at the basin was the exact same as my uh, base colour to start with. So we stretched the root using um, 8P and 3N. And then I mix clear with the 8P and 3N to mute it a little bit and then took that through to the ends until I was happy with how it was uh, looking. Something I talk about is having synergy with tone and, and colour. So that's why that's always um, something that I do. I try and use, if I'm going to prep the base first like we spoke about in the beginning of the video. Um, I like to be able to um, uh, use that. So it's something, you can't always do it, but it's something that I keep in mind that if I'm going to have to tone the ends, can I use a, I guess, a weaker version of those tones to counteract unwanted warmth or colour that is a result of lightning? That way you're going to have Really nice result when you get that synergy of tone. Thank you.
working through now and texturizing the front using vertical sections. And then we're going to cross check a shape in the side, the one that's framing the face, and we will be done. All right, let's do some styling. Let me just pull this back off your face while we look. That's an absolute ripper of a colour. Okay, styling time. We're just going to use a really um, simple but effective uh, tong. I think it's like 15 millimetres, um, which is about, about half an inch, I guess. Um, just wrap it. We, just, we don't make it curly. We just want to give it a, a little bend, like a, I guess, a, like a wave. forwarding this part is because this is super important and I get asked questions on my DMs about it, in my DMs about it all the time so one of the things I do is when I'm shaping the hair in terms of the haircut I also think about how it's going to be styled so that when you come to style it you have to style it to the way it's been cut so if you remember um, I did diagonal back sections when I did this shape around the front so I've taken a diagonal back section just look towards me, big babe. And then I aim for where I want it to accentuate, which is cheeks. Then when I put the iron in, or the wand, that is where the bend goes. So right there. And I don't want it to be too bendy, so we'll just do it for a few seconds. No, need a bit more than that. And then all the way down, it's just vertical, vertical sections. Let me spin everyone around a little bit. The reason why I do vertical when I get to the sides is I don't want to build too much width. I don't want it to be too big. Like at this, I want it to sit lean. But then in the top, we go back to using horizontal sections because we like to have a little bit of volume up here.
how I do the other side being right-handed. I struggle to stand or use it my other hand, so I always stand across again where the cheek is. That's where we want the bend to go. It doesn't need long, maybe five, six se seconds, something like that. Again, this is just about creating movement. This is not about making it curly. We just don't want it straight. Done. You can't see it yet, but everyone else can. Looks fabulous. Let me move you over a little bit. It's pretty decent before and after, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think it all works well. I think the length. Of our Evelyn's hair is um, really special. We spoke about um, on many occasions on this video and others how important it is to actually not just cut someone's hair just because you've seen it somewhere or it's not just about cutting it off or, or leaving it long. It's about making sure that the, um, the shape and the length and the colour is all in proportion. So the shape's in portion, proportion to their body, the colour suits their, their skin tone. So I, although I think we could have quite easily left Evelyn's hair the way it was after we prepped the base um, because her eyes are light and it would have made her eyes pop out a little bit more. But I just think that, you know, that little bit of highlighting in there makes it good. And again, it all, all goes with everything that's going on there. So you look good. Thanks for trusting me. Did you like your burrito? We had burritos for lunch. It was good. <laughs> she didn't finish all hers. I was going to eat it, but I didn't. I'm on a diet. I've got to lose the COVID, the COVID belly. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate the support. If you um, think you might know someone who may like this video, please make sure you share it with them. It's important that we share so other people can grow. And if you don't already subscribe to the channel, please do. It might be the first time you've seen me. And what a great opportunity it was to see me because you got to see a, a beautiful person have a great cut and colour. Um, go follow Evelyn on, on um, Snapchat. I was followed on Snapchat today. <laughs> I actually probably don't want to follow on Snapchat. Maybe, maybe Instagram or something like that, not Snapchat. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, how about a follow? I mean, I've got like something like 135, 40,000 on YouTube. And what's doing on Instagram? I've got like 30 or 40,000. So go over there and follow me. And um, if you want to support the channel, um, get yourself a hair tube shirt. Um, every little bit helps um, create these videos because they do cost money, um, but I do enjoy it. So I'm happy to pay some. If you buy, guys buy a t-shirt, um, it'd be big help. And um, Evelyn's got one on too. See you next time, guys. Thanks. Bye. Ha, <laughs>